Welcome to today's press conference. After the meeting of the expert committee on clinical events assessment following COVID-19 immunization, we have with us uh, co-conveners of the expert committee, Dr. Lisha Kwong and Professor Ivan Hong, as well as Assistant Director of the Department of Health, Mr. Frank Chan. Let's first hear from Professor Hong. Hello, everyone. This afternoon, the expert committee on clinical events assessment following COVID-19 immunization conducted a very detailed meeting and looked into the various serious adverse events following immunization as well as death cases. Let me first report to you two cases. One is a 63-year-old, the other one is a 55-year-old case. For the 63-year-old case, is someone uh, who stayed in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital but later died. The preliminary autopsy uh, revealed that it is a serious coronary disease as well as a myocardial inf infection causing um, pulmonary edema as, uh, and in the end um, um, lung failure. The other one is a 55 female. The preliminary autopsy uh, suggests that uh, there is the iota dissection as well as stroke. We are still waiting for a full autopsy report. We will then give you more information. The third case is one that was reviewed last week. It's a 71-year-old male. On the 7th uh, of March, he fainted at home. And then he was sent to the A and E at the uh, United Christian Hospital, but um, the person uh, died after resuscitation. On the third of March, um, the person received a dose of Sinovac. Preliminary autopsy reveals that there uh, there is a serious um, coronary illness. For three of the um, um, vessels, uh, ninety percent of them were blocked. And it also reviewed a serious um, myocardial uh, myocardial infection as well as a pulmonary edema. And the uh, RS preliminary assessment indicates that there is no direct link with the immunization. After waiting for a full autopsy report, the expert committee is going to make draw a conclusion on causality. The fourth case. It's a 70-year-old woman who suffers from a hypertension and osteoarthritis. On the 11th of March, in the morning, there was a shortness of breath. She collapsed at home. She was sent to Kwangwa Hospital. She did not respond to resuscitation and died. On the 2nd of March, she received a dose of um, Sinovac vaccine. From the preliminary autopsy, is shown that she's suffering from um, serious coronary d uh, disease. Three of the cardio uh, vessels are blocked by 90%. There is also myocardial infarction as well as pulmonary edema. The preliminary opinion of the expert committee is that the death of this lady is not directly linked to immunization. We will wait for a full autopsy report before conducting a causality assessment. I will now give you information about the other death case. The first is an 80-year-old male suffering from uh, diabetes as well as um, uh, stroke. On the 1st of March, he received a dose of a vaccine on the 6th of March. He was sent to Caritas Medical Center because of chest pain. And the um, clinical diagnosis is acute heart disease. He was sent to the ICU, and there was um, um, catheter uh, um, tests and found that a number of the coronary vessels have been seriously blocked. His condition deteriorated. On the 13th of March, he passed away. 
we're still waiting for an autopsy report. The expert committee's view is that it is something to do with uh, um, cardiovascular problems. Our preliminary conclusion is that it's not directly linked to the vaccine, but we need further information before we can conduct a causality assessment. The other case is a male, 67 year old. On the 2nd of March, he received a dose of a vaccine. He suffered from diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. A number of years ago, uh, there was um, a, a, a check and found that there were a problem. Nine days later, on the 11th of March, he collapsed at an MTR station. First aid was uh, being performed on him by passersby. He continued to receive treatment at Kong Wah Hospital. On the 13th of March, he passed away. The preliminary autopsy revealed that a number of the um, vessels have been seriously blocked. The clinical diagnosis is that is related to cardio um, um, cardiovascular illnesses causing uh, arrhythmia aggravating his uh, general condition in the end it caused death the Expert committee's preliminary view is that it's not directly linked to the immunization. The other death case is a 63-year-old man with a history of atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, and some other conditions, say fatty liver, and other chronic illnesses. On the 9th of March, he received um, a dose of a vaccine. On the 10th, he was sent to hospital. The clinical diagnosis was that it was a stroke. His condition of arrhythmia worsened. He was sent to the ICU. His heart condition continued to deteriorate. At midnight, he passed away yesterday. We're waiting for an autopsy to uh, find out the cause of death. After preliminary checking, we found that there are a number of heart diseases and other serious problems with a number of organs. Our preliminary assessment is that it's not directly linked to immunization. Of course, we have to wait for more information before we can conduct an in-depth causality assessment. The last case is a recent, recent one. The patient was sent to ICU is a 51-year-old man with a history of diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. On the 6th of March, he suffered from shortness of breath. On the 8th of March, he went to the A&E at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The uh, diagnosis at that time was acute um, myocardial infarction. He's been staying in the ICU. The hospital has done some checks on him and found that uh, there has been there is a serious blockage of his uh, coronary vessels. We've looked into this case based on his medical history. We think that at the moment uh, a preliminary finding is that it's not directly linked to immunization. 
Well, for the clinical um, assessment at the moment, he's still in a critical condition. The committee will wait for further information before conducting a causality assessment. Apart from the seven death cases, today the expert committee has done some assessment of uh, cases reported involving admission. Two suspected to be Bell's palsy. The two patients are not in a serious condition. One of them is a 69-year-old male. Was He was discharged uh, after receiving treatment at Rotonji Hospital. The other one is a 67-year-old male. The condition is not serious. However, there is a newly diagnosed diabetes condition, so he still has to stay in hospital, in Tunmun Hospital, to receive treatment. After assessment, the committee is unable to determine that these two cases uh, has any causality relationship with immunization. Previously, I mentioned about uh, four cases, all suffering from uh, cardiovascular diseases. This condition is uh, the main major cause of death globally and the third um, highest uh, cause of death in Hong Kong. In 2020, because of uh, myocardial infarction, number of episodes account for uh, 7,300. And in 2019, uh, because of ischemic uh, coronary disease or other coronary diseases, every day 16.7 people die. In relation to the number of uh, reported cases as well as death post immunization, the expert committee has conducted uh, some comparisons with um, death cases relating to coronary diseases, cerebral, vascular, or cardiovascular um, deaths in the same period. We have so far not identified any irregularities. There is no evidence showing that these serious cases uh, is linked to immunization. The committee needs to continue to monitor the situation. We'll work with the Hong Kong U to an analyze data and a forward-looking uh, study. At the same time, we will continue to collect overseas information, say unusual clinical incidents post immunization for comparison purpose. The Department of Health has also on a primary care level um, immunization issued an interim guidance note. You may refer to the thematic website. This can serve as a reference. The floor is now open to questions. Before you ask your questions, please uh, tell us about your organization. Could I to ask a question? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Um, the reporter over there first. Yes, RTHK. Just now you talked about two cases of facial paralysis. What about their uh, recovery? Will there be any um, consequences? And then the Department of Health has issued some guidelines as to who should be advised against uh, having immunization. Would it be too late? And what about blood pressure? What about diabetes? Uh, and what about uh, people suffering from cardiovascular diseases? Don't you think that the guidance notes should cover such cases as well? And then for the Oxford AstraZeneca uh, vaccines, many European countries have um, suspended the immunization. 
uh, program. How will the Department of Health uh, defer the introduction of such vaccines? For the two cases of uh, facial paralysis, uh, both of them have a mild case. For the first one, a 69-year-old man, he has been discharged from hospital after being issued with steroids. For the second case, uh, he has just been found to have a condition of diabetes uh, mellitus, so he has to be given medicine to control the condition. Well, as far as the timing is concerned, well, soon after the vaccination, um, the gentleman suffered from the facial paralysis. Paralysis. Uh, we, at this moment, cannot establish a causal relationship between the vaccination and the uh, facial paralysis. As to the timing of the issuance of the guidance notes, well, I believe we need data to support our advice before we can come up with some interim guidance notes. Well, if you may refer to the guidance issued by the British uh, Department of Health, theirs is very simple and brief, while ours is very detailed. And in fact, we have got two more sets of details. If you click open uh, the relevant links, in fact, you have got detailed uh, advice concerning diabetic um, patients as well as uh, people suffering from high blood pressure. So uh, you can refer to such uh, information. As to the thrombosis suffered by people receiving um, Oswald AstraZeneca vaccines, well, we will certainly uh, follow up with this. And we will ask uh, for more information from AstraZeneca, in particular about the cases of clock, uh, the clogging of blood vessels. For the moment, uh, we haven't uh, established any direct link, but we are asking for more um, data so that the expert committee can have a better uh, idea. The next reporter, the one in the front. Good evening, Apple Daily. There were a number of death cases. At the time of vaccination, did they disclose their medical history to the vaccination center? Or was it the case that they had never disclosed their medical history and it was only at the moment of autopsy were they found to have suffered from serious um, problems? Now, experts are saying that there's no, no direct link. I would like to know under what circumstances would you say that the a case is directly related? Well, for the recipients, we try to see whether there were anything unusual right after the vaccination. For the 30 minutes after the vaccination, while they stayed there, there was not anything untoward. As to the vaccination centers, well, it's not a case of uh, the patients or the recipients visiting an outpatient clinic. They went to a vaccination center. The medical staff asked about their medical history. The Medical staff had a few um, ideas about uh, their symptoms, so to speak, and then vaccination was carried out. It requires the recipient to take the initiative to disclose their medical history. They need to report the matter to the relevant uh, staff member, so the recipients of the vaccination must frankly tell the medical staff member, and then the medical staff member can provide good advice to the recipient. Sorry, speaker is off mic. As to your question, I think we need to have more detailed questions to establish that. I think it is quite impossible to uh, get such details, but I'm sure the relevant medical staff member must have asked about the medical history as well as um, whether recently there were any uh, symptoms. I'm sure that must have been asked. Yes, the one at the back, Ming Pao. First of all, you mentioned that there were two um, death cases. 
80 year old ma male, 76 year old male, as well as a 51 year old man who is in a critical condition. You said that their blood vessels were severely blocked. I would like to know how serious it was. Can you sort of give us a percentage? And in this case, does it mean that their um, medical conditions have not been well controlled? And then in the case of the uh, Bell's palsy, for the 57-year-old man, when did he get the jab and uh, where was it? And it was said that in a few minutes, he developed the condition. What about the earlier uh, patient, 69-year-old year male who has already been discharged. Was his case less serious? Currently, we are providing two vaccines. Now, for the known death cases and the known critical cases, for the time being, all of them were administered with uh, CoronaVac. So uh, what is your analysis of such a scenario? Yes, for the 80-year-old male who passed away, uh, well, as far as the medical history is concerned, uh, diabetes, um, hypertension, um, as well as the hardening of the blood vessels. Well, for the clinical data, I think um, he did not have any symptoms developed before admission concerning cardiovascular problems. Uh, well, uh, we checked the data from the catheterization uh, examination. Two out of three blood vessels were clogged, and then two major arteries were blocked to almost 90 percent. As to the 51-year-old male who's still staying at an ICU uh, ward, well, our understanding is that he has uh, hypertension, diabetes, as well as um, hypolipidemia. Um, he had uh, pulmonary edema, and he had um, heart disease. So it was a case of uh, myocardial infarction. So we carried out the uh, catheterization, and we also operated on him. And in fact, uh, three vessels uh, were blocked to more than 90 percent. Um, so the angioplasty was carried out for him. And he is now in ICU. We hope that uh, he will uh, recover. Oh. For a 67-year-old, the other case, a 67-year-old male who collapsed at the MTR station, he, were, he received resuscitation. This morning, there was an autopsy. For two of the major uh, arteries, 99 to 100 percent of of them are blocked, and we also notice that there is myocardial infarction. We don't know whether it's an old condition or a new one. We have invited um, an, uh, a car a cardio expert. We think that um, there was the condition of arrhythmia causing heart failure and serious pulmonary edema. Well, I think, now according to the expert, that um, well, it's a case of someone um, fainting and then in the end pass passing away, according to the cardiologist. We learned that a few years ago, um, there was a similar condition. We learned that his diet hasn't changed much. 
but it hasn't been admitted to hospital in recent years. We think that it is a sudden blockage. And it's been over nine days since the inoculation. For the two cases of Bell's palsy, the first one is a 69-year-old male. On the 6th of March, he received an inoculation. Several hours later, he found that his face felt numb. And there, was, there were signs of uh, facial paralysis. On the same day, he went to Rutonji Hospital. After treatment, his condition improved. On the 8th of March, he was discharged. The other one is a 57-year-old male. On the 7th of March, he was inoculated on the 8th. He found that he he found that his face was somewhat numb and uh, limbness. On the left side of his face, left side of his mouth, he could not really use, uh, move his muscle and there was some form of uh, par paralysis. He received treatment. His condition improved. But at the same time, it's found that he was he is actually suffering from diabetes. So he's receiving treatment in the hospital and cannot be discharged. I believe that the two hospitals uh, will follow up the case in their uh, medicine uh, ward. Yes, both of them. Speakers of mic. The interpreter cannot hear. The interpreter cannot hear. The interpreter cannot hear. We have looked at the data, made comparisons. So far, there is no significant difference from our base, from our baseline data. The program offering uh, Sinovac has been in place for over two weeks. Over 150,000 people have received a dose. Co in comparison for Cominati, the um, period of the program is, is shorter. So far, 40,000 people have received the dose. We need to follow the situation for a longer time before we can give you more information. Next, an English question over there. The Bell's palsy patients. Bell's palsy is regarded as one of the more alarming conditions for vaccine reactions. So what reasons does the committee believe that such condition is not linked to the vaccine? My second question is whether the committee right now has sufficient evidence to establish whether people with cardiovascular diseases should postpone or avoid their vaccinations. And my third question is tonight the government, the uh, Center of Health Protection um, released the guidelines for um, medical practitioners and those in the healthcare industry on whether or not people should get the vaccination. And one of the gu guidelines said that people who have GBS, Guillain Barrera syndrome should not take the vaccine. But what about people with a history of GBS or, or those who have recovered from GBS? Should they be able to take the vaccine? Thank you. So, with regards to your first question uh, concerning the Bell's policy, in fact, there are many reasons causing Bell's policy, including, of course, uh, viral infection like the varicella zoster virus uh, uh, infection uh, causing Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, and also many other uh, infection, viral infection could lead to the Bell's policy. So uh, we have to, uh, of course, uh, look at the, the time frame uh, in terms of developing Bell's policy. Uh, the current evidence from, from overseas is that the usual onset of Bell's policy secondary to vaccination usually is a few weeks' time, maybe like beyond usually about four to eight weeks. So these cases actually presented the Bell's policy within a day. So the time frame is a little bit unusual. So we, as a result, we could not confirm uh, whether it is due to the, the vaccine itself or whether it is due to a concomitant viral infection. So we will follow, up, follow this up. And of course, having more data uh, with a longer follow-up period, then we will be able to confirm whether there's an association with the vaccine. Uh, with regards to people with cardiovascular diseases, uh, we have said many times, in fact, for patients who have got very stable disease, 
uh, chronic illnesses, including cardiovascular disease, they will be able to, or they should be, they will be encouraged to receive the vaccination. Uh, we only refer to patients who have symptoms or have very poor control. For example, their, uh, their hypertension, they are very poorly controlled, or they have very poorly controlled diabetes, uh, or they have uh, ongoing symptoms, for example, chest pain, or shortness of breath on exertion. So these patients, we would suggest them to defer the vaccination until they have controlled their current illnesses, uh, and then, of course, they could receive the vaccine afterwards. Uh, and I think that for the... Um, the current guidelines or the recommendation from the Department of Health, uh, I think that the, the recommendation that they posted is uh, very important and would be helpful for both patients and also for the uh, family practitioners who is giving the vaccine uh, to these patients uh, as a so-called recommendation or guideline so that they can actually put reference uh, to decide whether uh, they should, uh, the, the vaccine should be given to these individuals. Next, the one in blue. Let's say, uh, commercial radio. Well, um, for the two vaccines, one had been administered for two weeks, another one week. So I'm talking about benchmarks. Uh, what about the usual rates of um, cardiovascular diseases? So how do you compare the background figures and the latest figures? For how long should we wait until we can say that the comparison is meaningful? Now, two weeks have passed, and you're saying that um, the cases are unrelated. Would it be an immature conclusion? Well, um, we need uh, more time to look at the background incidence rates. For the, for the two vaccines, both of them require two doses. So we shouldn't just be interested in the first dose. I think it's more important to look at the second dose because the reaction may be stronger. So I would say that uh, we need to follow up for another four weeks after the second dose has been administered. In other words, a couple of months uh, before we have sufficient data to check whether the two vaccines would give rise to um, adverse events, and then we can make comparisons with the background incidence rates. Of course, we'll also look at the overseas data because they wrote out their vaccine programs earlier, and they have a larger set of data. Uh, the next reporter, the one in the front. I'm from Hong Kong 01. First of all, you talked about the first case of Bell's palsy, 69-year-old male. In a few hours' time, he developed the symptoms of facial paralysis. Why the experts are still saying that it had got nothing to do with the vaccine? Does it mean that you would only accept a case uh, when the symptoms developed in 30 minutes' time? And then we have seen a few death cases. And it is said that they have problems uh, with cardiovas cardiovascular diseases. So would you say that cardiovascular patients should be advised against vaccination for the time being? And just now, we have been given the guidance notes. But then they are too general. We don't have any specific uh, comments. Say, for example, um, the sort of threshold value of the uh, blood sugar levels. So would it be up to the patients or the recipients themselves or the doctors themselves that make the decision? If something untoward happens, uh, will the medical doctor be uh, free from liabilities? Well, let me talk about uh, facial uh, paralysis. If it is to be connected with vaccination, like in the case of flu jabs, usually the uh, condition developed in a few weeks' time. This is because after vaccination, um, antibodies may be developed or there would be uh, immunize, uh, uh, immune reaction. So it usually takes more time. Now, if 
it develops in two hours' time, in a week's time, in a day's time. Well, in fact, according to scientific data and according to clinical experience, uh, this is not something commonly seen. So for the time being, we are not able to draw any conclusion. We will continue to um, follow up with such cases of Bell's palsy. We we'll try to see whether it is really the case that uh, in, for this uh, kind of vaccines, it will come up earlier. You talked about heart disease patients or cardiovascular patients. As I have said, if the conditions are under control, like he's on medication or he has already undergone angioplasty, or if the conditions are well under control, then vaccine is okay for him. And in fact, we encourage people with chronic disease that is well under control to get vaccinated. We are talking about those not under control, controlled poorly and with symptoms like chest pain and shortness of breath, then for such patients, they need to control their conditions better or they should have catheterization, uh, examination or even angioplasty operated uh, before they get vaccinated. Now, if you care to click the links in the guidance notes. In fact, there are more detailed uh, guidelines uh, regarding diabetic uh, patients and hypertension patients. Family doctors can refer to such guidelines to advise the patients as to whether they should get vaccinated or not. As we have said, whenever it comes to vaccination, there's always an element of relative risk. Well, in fact, patients or recipients uh, should have read the guidelines as well as the data before getting the vaccine administered. The next reporter, the one dressed in white. Good, after, uh, good evening. I'm from TVB. Just now, um, Professor Gabriel Leung said that um, vaccines may cause uh, clots in the blood vessels uh, for certain uh, recipients. I want to know whether this is the uh, cause of death for the seven death cases. Well, for uh, what Professor Leung referred to, um, that is some of the ingredients uh, in the vaccines. Well, many vaccines have got something similar, like um, hepatitis A, hepatitis B and even pneumococcal uh, vaccines. Well, um, many people have already got such uh, vaccines, and therefore we need to look at the um, data. And in fact, together with Hong Kong U, as far as the uh, pharmaceutical element is concerned, uh, department is concerned. We are having follow-up action, and we are trying to be anticipatory. We'll look at the data. We will see if um, the recipients are having a higher incidence rate of uh, blood clots. But then, as I have said, uh, we need more time to uh, process the data and then come to a conclusion. Yes, I'm from Hong Kong Economic. Uh, times regarding the first death case, that is the 63-year-old male. I would like to know about the full autopsy report. Now, it seems that we were told that uh, the full report will be ready in two weeks' time. But today, you still say that it's not yet ready. Why is there a delay, and when can it be uh, released? For the two cases of facial paralysis, you say that it is still indeterminated. Uh, will you have further examination, further investigation? If you're still unable to establish a link, would you say that um, this will be one of the options that you will pick? And then for professors to be free, until they get blocked up to 90%. For a normal person, uh, how long will it take? Is it possible for you to have access to the um, medical records of the latest uh, consultation? Uh, 
would it have been the case that it was triggered by the vaccination so that the blood vessels uh, get blocked after the vaccination? And then um, there was a second summary report uh, issued um, last Friday. 71 cases uh, were reported, 71 AEFI were reported. Um, there were 20 cases being investigated in two. And then um, it is said that at your meeting today, you're going to have a discussion. So did you um, look at the 71 cases and did you overturn the conclusion that it is suspected that two are consistent with the immunization? Well, regarding the first case, the initial autopsy report has been issued. We're still awaiting some chemical reports. It takes time, maybe one or two more weeks. They need some chemical solutions to fixate uh, certain organs like the brain, etc., to carry out the uh, autopsy. It takes time. Even when the report is ready, we need to uh, get the report from the coroner's court. We have to apply for the release. Once it is ready, we are going to make an announcement. As to the cases of uh, facial paralysis, well, it depends on the timing that's most crucial. As it happened quite shortly after the vaccination, so we need more cases before we can establish the causal relationship. Well, we will look at the cases uh, in future again. We won't be sort of uh, leaving them uh, forever. We will revisit such cases. As to the question of cardiovascular issues, well, patients might have had it for quite a long period of time, like 10 to 20 years, and they developed over such a period of time before the vessels were blocked. And if you notice uh, from the uh, various cases, now those patients have very serious uh, blocking of their vessels, 90, even 100 percent. So we believe that there is no direct relationship with the vaccines. Let me add that today the expert committee mainly focused on cases of concern. Today, we discussed about um, six reports and eight incidents. Our conclusion is that four of them are inconsistent. One is consistent, two are uh, indetermined, and one unclass unclassifiable. Say, for example, for consistent cases, is a 77-year-old female. After immunization, she found that uh, she felt nauseous. After a day, we looked at her clinical condition and the medication. She's been taking uh, medication to control his hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Well, uh, there is one day that is related to the immunization. But we see that um, the medication she's been taking will not cause nausea. According to the information supplied by the pharmaceutical company, that condition is one of uh, the side effects. In, so in the end, the expert committee is of the, the opinion that it is consistent with uh, incidents post immunization. She received the dose on the 7th of March, also Sinovac. Sorry, speakers of mic. The speaker is not using a microphone. The interpreter cannot hear. The interpreter cannot hear. Every patient follow up, follows up on their conditions differently. There, is, there are patients who have suffered from myocardial infarction, and they've conducted um, cardio um, catheterization a number of years ago, but, they, but their condition is not followed up with care. In some cases, patients themselves don't even know that they're suffering from serious uh, um, 
coronary diseases unless there are symptoms. No one could tell, and it's unfortunate that the the conditions are found after an autopsy. Sixth case, 67 year old. 94, there was an incident of a myocardial infarction. And in 2013, there was a cardiac uh, catheterization. And it was found that uh, one of the uh, LAD, there was a 40% blockage. In the left circumflex and right coronary artery, they were completely blocked. That's uh, the only case where we have information because an, an cardiac uh, catheterization has been performed. I'm from Stan News. I'd like to ask more about uh, Professor Gabriel, Gabriel Leung's assumption that is, an adjuvant may cause other conditions. Just now, you said that um, it would take time. Is it? Well, is it possible that this assumption stands? How likely is it? Well, um, if uh, immunization may accelerate inflama inflammation of the um, um, vessels, or would you ask for people suffering from coronary diseases to pause on the immunization? Well, on the mainland, um, the National Health Administration uh, Still have not, still has not allowed immunization on elderly people. Well, currently, um, there are people suffering from uh, stroke or um, coronary illnesses. If they have recovered, would you recommend that they receive Im the immunization? Well, there are a lot of um, I vaccines that contain. A juven. But it, there is uh, no evidence showing that it will cause myocardial infarction. We don't rule the possibility that there may be some adjuvants in the um, COVID vaccines that may cause such conditions. There may be a higher um, level of adjuvant, adjuvant or uh, that may cause some condition. However, the program has been running for two weeks only, and we have not seen any such cases. As I said, that it will take at least two, three, two or three months for us to collect more data to see if it is anything to do with the adjuvant. So far, there is uh, no such evidence. In relation to immunization, and conditions like Bell's palsy or other clinical incidents. If necessary, we will share such data with other countries of the WHO. I think they'll be useful to other countries. Sorry, speakers of mic. The speaker is not using a microphone. The interpreter cannot hear. The speaker is not using a microphone. But if there is any uh, uh, anomalies, especially in relation to serious anomalies, we would um, not encourage the uh, recipient to receive the second dose. We would ask uh, for more information. Perhaps when we have more information, maybe it is possible for the recipient to receive a different vaccine. That's the end of um, the press conference. Thank you.